Hello, everyone. Before we start today's episode, we just want to quickly let you know about Tiny Teams Festival, which is this incredible festival that we're doing with the Yogscast Games. You can check it out on yogscast.games. But basically, the idea is... Tom, any ideas? What is it? <laughs> oh, my <laughs> is God. It, oh wait, is, is, wow. it, has Tom now got to pitch what he thinks? <laughs> Tom, Tom's got to pitch. So I think okay. Tiny okay. Teams is a place where people who are tiny teams of game developers can submit their games so they can get some some... Some juicy exposure. Is that is that a good idea? Juicy exposure. That is exactly Chris, the terminology you, we're using. Exactly. Chris, you get to play milk, milk the teat of steam and yeah. get some free yeah. exposure. Marketing is one of the hardest things <laughs> to do as a tiny team. So this is a great uh, thing for us. Great me, me and James are both tiny teams. So, yeah. you know, yeah. we have core teams of two. So if you've got a core team of one to three... You can you be go. in the festival. Get fat off the teat of steam. Brunch Club and Glove are both going to be on there. If you go and submit, you have two weeks from the recording of, of uh, this. So uh, if you submit your game to us, uh, we'll take a look through it. There's a chance that you'll get your game played on stream. Uh, you'll be on the front page of the, the event. You might be on the front page of Steam. Who knows? We'll, we'll see what happens. But we're also going to have like some really, really cool games, really big games joining us to be uh, discounted. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on. It's going to be an incredible event, August 9th to 15th. You have two weeks from now, which is July. I don't know, fucking hell. Like 27th <laughs> of July or something is the cutoff point. Just just submit it now. If the submission form is still on the website, just submit a game. Yeah. games. And if, if you're not a game developer, screw it. Why not go there just to check out some cool ass games made by small yeah. teams? Tiny teams, if you will. There's going to be loads of them. <laughs> Tiny teams. Are we going to do a tagline, Tom? What's the tagline for it? The tagline is, check out some games made by small teams. Tiny teams. <laughs> wow. What a fucking <laughs> tagline. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Enjoy the podcast with si Simon Clark. Bye. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Pitch Please, the podcast where people who play games pitch ideas to people who make them. For the first time in a, in, in a little while, that's actually true. Yes, Isn't it, it is true. That is true. Yeah. So last time you had some complaints about that intro, didn't you? You weren't a big fan. You were thinking of changing up. And I just feel like it sounds a bit weird. Like, I don't know, like phony almost. No, I like it. But it did make yeah. me question the validity of the statement. So I put together a big old document of every little individual piece of that intro. People who play games, I think that's correct. I mean, I picked up a controller yesterday. Yeah. I was playing a game five minutes before we started. So yeah, we are people. People that play games. People That's true. that make them. Chris, James, you make games, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are you okay? Seemingly. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. Hang on. So, yeah, that part's true. And we're pitching ideas. So every part of that statement is true. So I put together a big right. document that I sent forward to a load of people to, to clarify if that is in fact true. And I got this response. Dear Mr. Thunderclap, because I, I submitted it as a Thunderclap, obviously. Oh, I see. Of course, yeah, yeah. After reviewing your slightly soggy, I don't know how that happened, documentation regarding the podcast Pitch Perfect. I, I'm sure I said pitch, please, but whatever. That's common. We are happy to... to we're happy to corroborate your findings. And it says corroborate, which is a long word that I don't know. So this is obviously true. Regards, yeah. Sigmund Freud. Yeah. There you wow. go. Sigmund okay. Freud got back to <laughs> right. us. And, right, and look, I can't, I can't argue with that. So, so I put a lot of time putting together a document for that, uh, and that that leads us directly into our guest today. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Okay. There Amazing. you go. There's your intro. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Uh, uh, oh, wait, wait, wait! Hang on. Chris and Chris and James are here as well. Uh, everyone knows that. Hello. Hi, I'm Brunch Club <laughs> developer, okay. and like our guest today, I also have a PhD. If you know what I mean. Doesn't um, he's lying? <laughs> the person with the real PhD is Dr. Simon Clark, who's joining us today. Hello. Hello, Simon. Hello. Thank you very much for having me. This is uh, an experience already. Sorry you had to sit through that. <laughs> what was that, that was Tom? Not, that was a man having a mental breakdown. What was that? How's no, lockdown? I, is lockdown treating you all right? Like <laughs> I was I was just yeah. I was just, you know, I, I wanted to see get into the mind of Simon Clark. And you know, you've written tons of things and you've yep. got a phd which involves writing a ton of things and i want to say that i understand i understand what it's that, like to be that, a doctor that, the, i think what you successfully what you successfully captured then was the aura of craziness that surrounded me <laughs> when i was submitting the phd like exactly. it was like a spot it was it was like a window into my brain 
Um, but, was it, was it soggy I, as well? Soggy from the tears of having to write a PhD? <laughs> I literally have, right? So in my in my room, I have three post-it notes, which I call my PhD triptych, which is one that just says <laughs> fuck over and over again. <laughs> and, th- and this is also slightly moist and blurred because I'm pretty sure of some tears that were shed. There's another one that just says bored all over it. And then there's one that just says done in very small writing in the middle. Oh, and I've but kept- the, wow. feeling, the feeling when you got the response from Sigmund Freud himself, though, just like I did, yeah. It must have felt very, very good. <laughs> it's just, it how, how, how do you think doctor, people get doctorates? What do you think they Sigmund, do? Sigmund does, Freud, Sigmund Freud just, sends them submit. a letter that right. says, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, you're, like you're in. When you, here's when your, you here's your badge. Right? It's like a 500 meter swimming badge. You you're in the it, secret you club. <laughs> you sew it onto um, your doctor's jacket. We, it's, it's more like the stone cutters. You get like a secret handshake and, you know. Simon, could you... Could you just introduce yourself? <laughs> because we're not doing a very good job. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dr. Simon uh, Clark. Uh, hello. <laughs> Who yes. are you? Uh, so I, Why might we know you? Uh, you might know me from videos that don't get very many views, such as uh, the planets in Star Wars, which ones could really exist. Uh, I did a whole series about my PhD, uh, like vlogging the experience of doing it. I click that. Uh, and uh, I, I've basically been a full-time YouTuber since I graduated, so doing mostly stuff about uh, science, particularly stuff to do with climate, um, but also a, a bunch of other stuff, including some stuff with the Oxcast, um, and uh, yeah. including probably the thing that most fans would know me from, like Yogs fans would know me, is the, I wish it could be Fest Dag every day, which was a music <laughs> video I did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What about the time that you made me eat hat film sweat on crisps? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to mention that one. I did. Yeah, I, did. Was, I did that, that as well. They were good crisps, actually. They were good <laughs> crisps. I did realise not too long ago that I'd actually my girlfriend had been cooking sorry I should say my fiance has been cooking with oh, that pan yeah. for a while and didn't realise that that was the pan which would use to boil the sweat off oh yeah um, but I, it's probably We've all been fine there. it's probably fine by now <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, so for, for the first time in a while, we've actually got a guest who isn't a... De- well, not the first time in a while, but we've got a guest who isn't a developer, right? Mm. Uh, which I think should be a bit more exciting. Be- well, maybe not exciting. Maybe I'm... I, I don't want to... I feel wow. like every time we get a guest, I, wow. I shit on all the previous guests. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean to do that. <laughs> this what is the I best one say yet. Is, no pressure. Wow. <laughs> when, when a dev pitches a game to us, usually I feel like they might be kind of constrained by like their experience, yeah. right? their experience of how you can Scope. actually make games and what's possible. Yeah. We don't have that now because <laughs> well, you've never made a game, right, Simon? Have no, you? I, I, oh, no, I mean, I've done a fair bit of programming. It's published a game. Um, and I've okay. done, I, I did, I have used game libraries before. I did a project where I did some like machine learning. I was trying to do, uh, teach simple cars to go around a track by themselves. Um, and I used okay. some like Python libraries to do with that. But no, I've never, I've never published a game. So I, I have like a little bit of knowledge, which is a really dangerous thing. Like yeah. I know how coding that's, works. That's exactly <laughs> what we need for this podcast. Okay, so. good. <laughs> please please give us your pitch. Okay, so it's a very simple concept. It's perfect. PUBG meets wacky races. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Oh, so it's a battle it's cell damage. cart racer? So this was inspired by, uh, it was a Hat Films uh, stream that I watched where they did a uh, a PUBG wacky races type thing where they were doing a race around the island. And right. yeah. uh, they've done it in GTA since. And I just love this idea of... Um, a squad-based racing game. So one of the things that I've oh loved playing God. over the past couple of years has been Guns of Icarus uh, and yeah. also uh, Blackwake, which is the same, just missing a dimension. Um, <laughs> so and- how those? Ga- could you describe those games or one of those games roughly? <laughs> so so- uh, just to pick Guns of Icarus, uh, that's where you are a squad on an airship and you mm-hmm. are free to roam around within a vi- this vehicle and you your objective is to shoot other ships out of the sky. So you have a pilot, a pilot uh, gunners and engineers who are respectively going to be flying the ship, shooting the other ships ships and also repairing damage that other ships do to you so it's a shooter okay. but it's a team-based shooter uh which i just find like it's a very, very interesting fun. dynamic and it's also if you, I, I think for the business side of me kicking out a little bit is <laughs> if you want to make a game that is good for streaming you want your game to be popular you want people to play it and to play Perfect. it publicly yeah, so sure this kind of game like t- squad based gaming seems to suit streaming really well um and obviously everyone is familiar with the ip of wacky races um i'm not actually planning on basing it on wacky races that's just the nearest like cultural touchstone Why not? yeah fair enough um, yeah we could do an arrangement <laughs> yeah. next it's PUBG meets catch the pigeon um so basically it's like vehicle on vehicle combat but it's that's only a part of it really it's a race so it's a racing game 
But okay, okay. you are a squad in a vehicle, and the vehicles can be different sizes. So you could have a two-person vehicle, which would be like a, mo- a uh, motorbike with a sidecar, um, like the old Space Marine uh, assault bikes, not the new or the new Primaris ATV. Sorry, I, I'm a massive Warhammer nerd, and they just released the worst <laughs> model in the history of the company, and it just bugs right. me out. It's still <laughs> rattling around in my brain. Um, oh my keep god. Up at night. Yeah, it really, oh, it's so bad. It's so stupid. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I won't go off on one. Um, so like that, like a motorbike with a sidecar, or you could have like, if you had like a six person vehicle, you could have like a Mad Max style big rig and they'd have different advantages and disadvantages. Oh, so you could okay. have like- That's got to be exciting. You know, like, so they have different amounts of armor, different speed, different numbers of like hard points that you could choose the weapon that goes on it. So the bike, oh you'd have God, like a, okay. uh, a driver and a gunner and you get to choose what that gun is. Um, but then if you're on like mm-hmm. a big rig, rig you could have multiple weapon points you could have like engineers running around inside trying to fix stuff um and i i'm not sure if you if it should be that if you get destroyed you are out of the race and you just queue again or right, okay if you get there's like a cool down period and then you get put back in because I, I worried that it would be too frustrating if you're in a tiny little bike and you just get like one tapped all the I mean, time warzone does that great thing of uh, being able to buy your squad mate back right or like uh, other ways of bringing your squad mate back once you're yeah like i feel like that is a, a nice extent like an expansion of what battle royale was up to that point where it is frustrating if you die right in the beginning you're like well i'm gonna fucking sit here and watch my squad mates for 20 minutes and then they'll lose yeah and then we're done but i quite um, i quite like this idea that it would be a whole squad wipe or nothing it's not like with guns of Icarus, you don't have an individual okay. health meter it's the ship has armor and um, yeah. uh, hp um so yeah you don't get that situation of just watching people you know, loot your body and then, you know, run off into the <laughs> distance. I um, think uh, <laughs> if your car blows up, you uh, you are able to jump off and start running. <laughs> uh, can, you, can you jump onto oh other people's God. vehicles? Can you now, jump across and, like, pirate ship it? In my brain, no, but I'd be open to the idea. I feel like, mm. you know, but also... As soon as you said... Sorry, go on. No, 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 no. I wasn't going to say anything interesting. Um, <laughs> the, you know, I, I just wanted, before, well, before, we, before we kind of delve too deep into it and, and sort of open it a bit like the the first thing that came to my head when you said um the combat with vehicles was do you remember do you remember twisted metal did anyone play mm. that oh mm. vaguely yeah that was like a playstation game twisted i think metal. they they made like twisted metal and then there was twisted metal black i think there was also a, a kind of a, a knockoff called vigilante something um but it, it was basically just like it was deathmatch, really. It wasn't. It wasn't a race, um, but it was. You, what made it interesting was it was. It was kind of around the time of like Destruction Derby and those kind of games. Mm. But you, the the vehicles themselves were like characters. They had like they all had special abilities. And it was kind of like Mario Kart, and that you had different. Like you would have different like levels of strength, and like you could take so much damage and things, or you were quicker. Yeah, but. But the maps were kind of like crazy. Like there was one that was just in the, in the middle of Paris, and you could you could get to the top of the Eiffel Tower and and drive off. And you know, like a, and you, I think you could destroy the Eiffel Tower actually, if I remember right. <laughs> um, just a bunch of crazy stuff like that. And that was that was so much fun. Like you would just have like the crazy ice cream van man who was like the big beefy guy, but was super slow. And there was like a bunch of pickups and stuff. Is is this anything like? What you? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I think that's a lot of it. Although you do make an interesting point with the maps, I had in my head that this would be like procedurally generated routes, so you don't learn what the map is. It's like if you have like a Badlands map, and then you have like tiles that you get put in front of you successively. Right, that's different okay, every time. Right. Um, sorry, Chris, question. Hello. Chris. Sorry, so, you say I, uh, yeah, we put our hand up because of the lag sometimes. <laughs> um, so when you said when you said car combat and you said wacky races, one the game I used to play wacky races as a kid and I loved it. It immediately reminded me of a game called Cell Damage. So Cell yeah. Damage is... I've posted the link in the chat as well. So Cell Damage is a game mm, where right. the, all the cars are the characters. So there's one car that has a giant fucking chainsaw that comes out and knocks everyone out. It's, it's arena combat, but with cars. And, so um, that's Deathmatch, right? That's Deathmatch, yeah. A few years ago, me and Alistair, we did a really like quick prototype of a, an arena car game, but where the cars... <laughs> You had to have team comp. So you had a little ambulance and that was the healer of the group. And then you had like a tank, right. which was an actual tank. <laughs> Man, okay. Okay. And if they had they had abilities and they had ultimates as well. So the ambulance had a defib ability where it would do a radius thing and it would revive any dead cars in that area. But you'd have to charge it up. And like the tank had one where it would just shoot out loads of like missiles from it. And So uh, in like, that instance, it was all team there would comp. be, so be, there would be a hundred cars in this race. Like, it was a race. It was a huge arena. But I mean, in so, terms of the the battle royale race, which is what this is, if you've got 
individual the classes does, right? are the individual. If you're if you're picking a character in a squad, you've got ambulance in a team of four different cars, and you've got a hundred cars on this race yeah. potentially. Um, <laughs> whereas whereas Simon's one is yeah, you're, you're a crew of you know four on one car. Um, is it, is it yeah, like a so, war rig? Do you imagine? Like a, yeah, for the big one. But I, I feel like it's kind of fun to have. Like, <clears> I don't know if anyone's seen like the race to Dakar. Like, you get on the same track. Uh, you you will get people on motorbikes and cars and massive trucks racing all at the same okay. time. And I feel like yeah. the idea that you have like bulk that you can throw around to, for example, try and crush a biker is just like a fun extra component to the game. So you could choose to be a bike with like a one, maybe even a one person team, but then you're super vulnerable to mm. the, the biggest I really rights. like that actually because one of my biggest problems with Battle Royale games is you know you've got your four man squad the three man squad duos solo play uh, and you always have to have a team of X amount of people to play in those game modes whereas in this one you've got I want to play on the small bike and you're essentially the solo player on this tiny little nippy vehicle that probably has like a very yeah. small gun on it and then right next to you there's a six person squad on their truck <laughs> and they're trying to jump across to your bike to take you down and all of these different things yeah um <clears throat> so i really like the idea that you're against bigger teams that are so in I bigger vehicles but slower things or whatever a good thing to do with that is if you if you do have that, that <clears throat> mix of i can be a solo player jump into a squad and obviously you can do that in cod or like Warzone or something, but you have a massive disadvantage. But in mm. like something like that, you could the way you design the map, if it wasn't procedural, you could do it if it was procedural, but it would be a lot easier to make it bespoke, is you design the map to have advantages for the smaller vehicles that say the big vehicle can't get through like a little gap. Yeah, so you have yeah. ways of right, like, yeah, yeah. getting out of the way or there's like certain Just like in access. Mad Max. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah. stuff like that where... It's you need everything has an advantage and a disadvantage. It's it all comes down to not the fact that they have more people, but the fact that you can you can play the the area better. And yeah. in yeah. regards to the race, okay, I was kind of thinking because the problem with a, a race is obviously it's linear. Yeah, but what if it, so if there was an enclosing zone like a normal battle royale, but everyone within that had their own checkpoints to go to, and it's the cro the meeting of when you're trying to get to where you want to go and they're trying to get to where they want to go. But then at the same time, as you come across each other, you could try and take each other out. So you're not going towards your checkpoint. So it is the first person to finish the race, but also you can interfere with people's races. I see. I see what so you're getting at, yeah. Open worldy in a sense. You've got checkpoints across the map. Everyone is in the same area yeah. to try and... To try and get so, to, well, say, 20 checkpoints but then, first. Like, you could do it where... Far. James, sorry, you're going to... Yeah. Was... That, that's that's really interesting. I, when you mentioned PUBG, though, the, the first thing that I thought was the is the slowly encroaching space that you have to operate within. And I was like, does that actually make this more of like an endless runner type race? Like, do you imagine a lap or do you imagine you're just you're like Mad Maxing it through the desert and behind you? I don't know, maybe the sand is collapsing away or maybe there's like a cliff face or there's an oh. earthquake or something. Ah, yeah. And you're just trying to outrun it. So it's not even necessarily that you have to combat each other. It's just that you've got to try and last but yeah, then it's kind you of can like obviously take each other machines. out as well. It's more like, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Is it more like micro machines and you yeah, just try like and... an elimination race. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you okay. could have a hundred races and it's just like, you just got to keep going and then it's just carnage to begin with and then you sort of filter down to try and... Was that a pun? Last... <laughs> what was that? Carnage. Carnage. Oh, carnage. Uh, okay. Well, that's the name of the... That's the name of the... That's the name of the game. <laughs> I think that is... Well, is that's like... <laughs> Carmageddon. You can call that. it Carmageddon, yeah. Carmageddon, yeah. I, I, I do like the idea of the Mad Max aesthetic combined with that as well. You have like the George Miller massive sandstorm an open coming behind you. Plains, yeah. Oh. Did okay, you ever get, play the game you... uh, Fuel? No, I was game, say Fuel, yeah. Fuel. The open world racing game Fuel, where there was set in a world where basically you I think the story is really stupid. It's like there's a finite amount of fuel left that's been extracted. They're not extracting any more, so you might as well have fun. And like there's <laughs> like it's really stupid. There's giant mm. thunderstorms that happen, giant like tornadoes that just appear. It's all open world. It's all, it's, it was a really fun game at the time. Um 
And the but map that, was huge as well. The map was huge. That was. I the, think like, that was an achievement to drive from one end to the other, and it was. It took like twenty five minutes or something to do. I'm looking um, at the Wikipedia page right now. It says the map was the size of Connecticut. It was <laughs> oh my God. what fourteen thousand <laughs> square <laughs> kilometers. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Huge. But shit. also, it's, it's Connecticut. Hey, that's the name. We we <laughs> use our. <laughs> <laughs> they they do use the. It's the apocalypse. It's very barren as a way to right. go. <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> it's big. <laughs> It makes maybe yeah. the map's easy so if it's just flat and there's yeah. maybe some bumps. You know, you yeah. don't so know there's a rock. Else. I mean, I had to <laughs> going I had back to the the oh sorry the 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 the, the um the battle royale side of things. Like, what if it was like what if you were if you're using James's suggestion about like what all like the, the idea of like natural disasters or things happening. Like, what if instead of a circle, a constantly closing in circle, which is like the base, you know, the generic battle royale thing. Mm. If rather than that, you have these Mad Max style natural disasters like a, a dust tornado or a storm or whatever but then also an earthquake or the land falls away but they're at random points uh, in inside this huge map that, and those those points change depending on oh. the, every time you play the map so it's like um oh fuck there was that one where it was a tv show uh and also there was one mm -hmm. do you remember radical heights the uh battle royale from lawbreakers and gears of war developer cliff Blazinski before his studio shut down i think that's all we need to say about that game yeah. Uh, basically I mean, what it did it, so <laughs> it was a grid based battle royale on the map and zones shut off so you, you okay. could get caught right. in between okay. zones uh, so, so you're, you're yeah, thinking kind of, yeah you're still thinking this open worldy checkpoint you thing aren't you well that's what Alex just said right. of like maybe that, that's how just that's like a possible bit of the map that just makes me think of Hot Wheels, you know, the like figure eight track where you, they <laughs> crash in the middle. It's like that's I'm getting great visions of that where you've got to all <laughs> plow to the other side of the map and you just let it's uh, basically fest, destruction basically. Derby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that could be great. Like, and then you could have different parts of the map that become inaccessible, but then you might like maybe through like like you're a car, so you can jump over bits that have just fallen away. The ground's fallen away, mm. but you can jump over it. You can still fuck mm. up. And mm. yeah. I mean, I'm, I think but I think the thing in my head that this is also inspired by is the pod racing from episode one, like that nice. kind yes. of sort of circuit. So I feel mm. like you could actually okay. com combine like natural disasters in certain, if you wanted to do like a, a linear race and maybe combine it with that, like racing the sun aspect of like the blue coming in behind you, um, you could easily yeah. add like, I don't know, there are, uh, what are they called? Dus t Dusk and Raiders now shooting at you from this side, mm. or there's like a bit that's <laughs> collapsed, or whatever it's going to be. Like that, I think that's the kind of energy that I wanted this to have. Like it's going to be fast, but it's also like combating combat between the vehicles. Oh, so I it's think, fast so it, and it has furious. to be the objective. Sorry, <laughs> it's fast and furious, is what you're saying. Yes, that's a great okay. name for it. That's a great so name. Time. Yeah, okay. franchise. So, so you are imagining very much it being a race. Well, that's like, one possibility. The end, there's but a, an I quite, objective to. I quite like the idea of it because that's that's the other thing is you could do it as multiple stages. You could have like it, either do one map that you know you're you try and survive and it's the last vehicle standing, which I think is a great <laughs> idea. Or you could do mm -hmm. it as it is a race and then you do multiple you know, mm. uh, like stages to it. And perhaps between the stages, you can change up what you're doing with the vehicle. It gives you a chance to match what your opponents are doing kind mm. of thing. So yeah, I think that'd okay. be good. So you could go in with a, a, a car build, which is slower, but has more armor, which means you can take more hits. But I also yeah. think mm. that, that doing damage and kills should factor into your time. So if you could, you could blitz through it, <clears> not <throat> kill anyone, but then not win because the guy who came in in second was slightly slower, but had two kills, which took like a chunk of time off, or like or, did a multiplier yeah. based on that, because it encourages actual play. Not I'm going to just build the fastest Carnage. car I can and go. But at the yeah. same time, like you would have the the fact that other vehicles are going to shoot you out if you just put all your points into speed. I guess. <laughs> mm. Could what, you have what, points what, into traps so you get someone leave the vehicle? Like oh one God. of your team can leave the vehicle and set traps like well, in rookie racing. So yeah, well, that, that could be, be the cool. person on the back, right? Because if you've got a big like rig, you can have, have like a mine layer. Yeah. A, a I think yeah, um, yeah. the the problem is I think we've now got almost three different games here where Chris is saying <laughs> like this this open world checkpoint based game, which is cool. However, there could be a point of the game where you and the other final person are on the opposite end of the world and you're never going to interact with each other. Well, so that, you're just you, you, racing. You enforce that by closing off the correct zones <clears throat> if you're doing it zone-based. Yeah, you just make sure you never are a You never separate. Like That's it's much, that's more of a traditional, uh, but, you know, 
PUBG style closing the blue yeah, game basically. Yeah. I, I just not really sure why anyone would pick the slow tanky vehicle if there's less interaction with players. Uh, I feel like everyone's going to pick like the motorbike, the one squat, one person motorbike, and just zip through the entire game. Uh, because if game you get hit by, if you, get, if you sort of get hit by a truck as a motorbike, you're not going to survive. So you're very squishy. So yeah. it comes down to. Well, that's what I mean. Like, is why speed would enough pick to get away? Bike? <laughs> why would anyone pick the truck? I mean, and if, I, yeah, um, I feel I do kind of agree. I feel like uh, if you're going to have that element of you, you want combat to be on an equal footing to racing. Yeah. in this and so you'll naturally want to constrain the people i do feel like it being linear basically w is a more effective way of doing that um whether that is a race or if it is that, that makes sense you know well, chasing the sun like, type thing personally i'm most excited about what james was saying with the the like, it's like the, a desert storm going on behind mm. you sandstorm coming in behind you and everyone is just it's an elimination race essentially it's just a straight line and uh, or maybe there's a couple of curves and whatever. But, but I, I, I imagine that, but with like the Phantom Menace pod racing mm. track, and then, and then that just gets consumed <laughs> behind you by. Yeah, you know. I mean, so there could be you like could do so of pod racing, aren't you? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> pod racing has got to be in there. It's basically <laughs> the only good thing apart from the music one. about episode one. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, could, you could just you could do the sand, but you could also do like an ice level, so the ice caps are melting behind yeah. you and like put. Always away. shove climate change in there. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But also, <laughs> another but idea I was having... Um, so I was going to say, but that doesn't solve your the, the truck bike issue. You still have that issue in a linear well, race. In fact, well, it's more apparent because everyone's next to each other. So this is kind of probably... Uh, I don't think you should be able to destroy the cars. I think what damage is being done to you is like, if, if you're a truck with six people on it, if you get hit, it's the people on the truck that is dying out and they have like i don't know 10 second respawn or whatever so that's how you bring them back in but obviously if the driver of the vehicle gets killed the truck's going to start slowing down and then he's mm. going to the storm is going to start catching <laughs> or, up or to the them. guy who has to spit spit the fuel into the uh, so is there, <laughs> <laughs> is there like in guns of icarus you know there's there's stations so there's a driver okay there's a fire back there get back there start the fire like uh, not start mm -hmm. the fire that would be the worst thing to do <laughs> put the fire, the fire out vehicle on fire. or but also like faster, you need right? to throw like a thing at another vehicle who's nearby so you need that guy to be doing that but someone needs to be driving so if someone takes out the driver you're like oh shit so i need to run up to the driving seat get in the thing start yeah, driving exactly. he's yeah. gonna respawn so it's kind of like because if you're in first Guns place on a bike and then someone just snipes you from afar that's it you're just out of the game right that you, you're yeah. just dead uh but if you're just knocked out and then you come back like 10 seconds later and you're like suddenly like in the midst of like 20 other drivers. You're like, oh, oh shit, God, I actually oh, lost. <laughs> yeah. You get sniped on a bike and you're the only person on that on that vehicle and your bike just continues. Okay, you. now. <laughs> <Along this way. laughs> it's, 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 like it's like a little cart or something. Hear me out. For you're, 10 seconds. You're tethered. <laughs> what, if, what if everyone is in the, the, their own bespoke truck, but everyone has a bike? So they can get on it and go out and like, uh, <laughs> it's, style. it's, it's like a little, it's little like a little, bike. like a little scout assault unit. Right? It's, it's so, like how like big yachts have like tiny little ribs, like tiny little yeah. dinghies that they can get the in. Big there. like super yachts, they have a little <laughs> that dinghy that comes me out of, the side. Um, of the Simpsons when Homer builds the bike for Bart and then he starts riding it and more pieces fall off. <laughs> fall of it. off like yeah. as you, you, everyone starts in <laughs> yeah. a truck, but then like two wheels fall off and now you're in a car and then oh someone gosh. shoots it and now you're on a bike. And then yeah, but like just running. <laughs> what if everyone? Yeah, you have to have an engineer who's like constantly <laughs> fixing these bits to yeah, stop yeah. as they get shot off. Yeah. Bits of armor flying off, and maybe that smacks into a rider <laughs> I mean, behind you. I mean, that would be great. We, yeah. we kind of. I, mean, I suppose it would be similar to Guns of Icarus or, or something like Wreckfest. You could have damage uh, being specific to components of the vehicle, and so you know you need to repair those things. Um, and you know maybe if you take out a tire, that suddenly makes you much less effective as well i don't know if that would actually add to the game or if that just adds complexity and not much to the experience well, i think it adds to the, the the team communication aspect of it like hey we need someone on like yeah. to get yeah. over to the right wheel fix it now okay great mm, that's yeah. being handled uh, where uh, where's gary gary's out on the bike he's causing some havoc over there so like, <laughs> if you you know want to find out some information <clears throat> you send your little scout out and mm. if he gets blown up a minute later that bike respawns on the back and you can go do it again and your players back I, there. I feel like I feel like we can learn some lessons here from Sea of Thieves. If everyone played Sea of Thieves where that's just I mean like, yeah, I, mean, I suppose we could. In terms of the in terms of the combat, 
they oh jesus that combat yeah like the, the problem with sea of thieves with the combat was that you just the, the first time you do it it's incredible because all four of you or however many you have on the ship yeah. are like coordinating and you you like your ship can get destroyed yeah. but you also respawn and um it like but but after a couple of times it just it turns into a real slog where you're just like well it's just going to be an endless battle between me and this other fucking ship. And we're just going to continue respawning, trying to trying to find some way to cheese each other's boats to get destroyed. And that that can get really frustrating. So I think I think Simon's point about maybe not making sure that the vehicles can't get destroyed could could be a good way well, to they, they don't, they to don't get destroyed. That. They just get hindered by the component that's been yeah. destroyed until you fix mm. it. So yeah. like saying yeah. say someone targets dies. your engine, oh hey, you you lose five percent of your speed someone targets yeah. your wheels you can't turn as quick so you can't like dodge major like obstacles coming up you have to do it before mm. or you know there's certain impairments that you'll get depending do on you, what it is do but you i see feel like being vehicle sorry, to vehicle Chris. combat sorry like vehicle to vehicle combat you could have oh i'm gonna equip my truck this time with fucking Bo uh, bodicea spikes right <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but that that could add that could minus your top speed by about a percent because they're heavy or yeah. it interferes with your steering so there's the you need to have the the balance between risk reward i know i think i mentioned that term every fucking episode <laughs> because it's a really yeah. important thing to do is go it, it just if, if this has an advantage it needs to have a disadvantage and there yeah. needs to be balance. something that can counter that uh, yeah yeah that's Jeez, the thing. Sorry, sorry, do you see there oh, being on. uh collectibles in the race so you could drive over and pick up an additional cannon or armor plating or something or is it like you start with what you start with and that's it now th i think that's that actually asks that uh, that encourages an, e an extra question which i i kind of hadn't addressed which is the style of the whole thing because i feel like if mm. he oh, wants right. to go down like a very stylized route a la something you know you could make it 2d cartoony almost like um you could even do something like super hot where it's like just super polygonal then maybe that would work i had to admit i conceived it as being more PUBG style of kind of pseudo realistic, um, mm. in which case you wouldn't want to have power ups because I feel this like this isn't going to be good for audio listeners. But can we just get a show of hands to everyone that Im completely imagined the Mad Max video game, but with just more people editing? Yeah, Mad Max. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Is, we're all on the same page. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, what yeah. about it's not it's not uh, power ups, but uh, when you basically wipe out a squad and in this it's not wiping them out it's just knocking them out for a time you steal a component off their vehicle or i was imagining this earlier if you have like a six person vehicle this is like i don't know a garbage truck with just 10 people in the back or whatever right um yeah. and they don't have any weapons or anything but they just send out the crew they just jump onto different vehicles to hinder them in some way like they just they're, they're, oh, i love i like, love the idea of jumping onto different vehicles you jump yeah. on, that was a good up, but it has to be super ton of unforgiving like if you miss the vehicle you're just gone if you miss, oh, yeah. you just fucking die. yeah you die well, you're, you okay, come back in like 20 seconds. Or whatever, yeah. <laughs> what, what, talking about what Tom was saying, I think you need a grappling hook as one of the options as well. Yeah. So yeah. you can <sighs> shoot and rip off a piece from the other vehicle. But well, like, if, you're, if, vehicles, you're, if you're grappled you onto a vehicle, forward. that vehicle in front can dictate a lot of your movement. So like to yeah, shake exactly. you off, you could you could sharply turn right and swing that vehicle into like a rock or something. Oh, which oh then yeah, damages yeah. Them. vehicle. Yeah. But what my my oh, thing was was when you mentioned pickups, I was thinking like maybe if your armor doesn't regenerate but you drive over scrap and then you get scrap and then your the, your crew like weld it on mm. right so that mm. increases the like armor plating around your, your engine so you've you've welded something there therefore your engine can take a couple more hits before it then starts to take damage I, I actually like, really okay. like that. Uh, I feel like that kind of this... depends on whether you want it to be like an elimination race or an actual race because I feel like if it's mm. an elimination race then maybe th I don't know. Actually, which one would it suit better? Because I, I feel like I that's one of the problems that we, we're all like, oh, like we have like, again, like three or four <laughs> different games on the go simultaneously. <laughs> like, if you're going to develop it further, you need to like decide. You well, know, I feel is like it, you wait, is it like not an endless runner anymore? <laughs> yeah, elimination race. Okay. I, I feel okay. like that, that works best because my, my, one of my big problems with racing games is if you're in first and you're 10 seconds in the lead, that's it. You're pretty much going to be that way. If you race consistently, you're just going to stay mm. there and it's kind of boring. Like yeah, Mario Kart shell. even falls for that as well, where <laughs> all you do is pick up bananas and it's like, oh, I'm kind of, I'm just, I'm still but in first. It, and there's no satisfaction not... from being in first. 
Um, but can we introduce things in that in that way, in the same way that, like, you know, in Mario Kart, you have the blue shell or whatever. We have, um, we well, have things like environmental things, like the dust, like a dust tornado that passes by that you then might get hit by or you have to dodge, which is going to inevitably slow you down. Well, I mean, well, I think that's an really easy cool thing about it. That would be that you just, you time natural disasters to uh, the certain distance, like t- uh, the amount of time uh, for the first player to react to it. So the further back you are, the longer you have to adapt to whatever the new condition is. Right. Yeah. That could work. That sounds good. Yeah. Chris. Now, what if instead of <laughs> that, we just force players we punish players for going too far ahead. Uh, what, but you do punish How them you with mean? less time to react, right? Well, like, is what if like there's a there's a like a, a a safety zone, right? So if you go too far ahead, there's lots of like lightning strikes and whatever, and then it's like oh, so you're a, constrained a, to a there's like a Goldilocks zone. zone where mm. if you're in here. But you're close to everyone, so there's a lot of fighting going on. But you're oh, you're safe so from. You're, you're racing in the eye of the storm. Yeah, yeah. that's not that's a, <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah, and what a name for a game as that well. Sounds good. Eye of the storm. <laughs> so also with what Chris was saying, where you pick up scrap, I feel like the first person in front they can't pick up scrap mm. because the scrap that people are picking up are from cars that are being damaged in front yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of gives you that handicap. So, so if, if you do take also, damage the storm from can change not being in the Goldilocks zone, just start yeah. turning right and everyone's just like <laughs> this big unit of cars <laughs> yeah. just starting yeah, to turn yeah. right into each other. But yeah, like the person in the front, if he hits something or gets shot or whatever, scrap falls off of his car and the person in front slowly starts to deteriorate because they can't pick up new scrap. The person I feel behind like there should be some random then start getting scrap better. Though. Because otherwise um, the trickle down, no, but the trickle down just stops eventually. Because mm. if, mm. if that car doesn't have the ability to gain armor, the rest won't. I mean, visually, unless, unless that's the, how the elimination stuff works. No, unless that's, that's a, how you that's want the it point. to work. Like the person in yeah. front uh, can't regenerate, so eventually they will die out. It's kind of like a, a you know, you have to figure out when you want to also be in first place, right? Um, right. So it's yeah. like it's I, like I really like that. This is strat- It's like pitting in F one. You need to figure out when's the perfect time to pit because yeah. everyone's going to go past you, but then they're going to have to pit at one point, so you can go past them. It also mm. ensures a mega scrap in the middle, right? Like no one wants to get too far ahead, no one wants to get too far behind because they'll die. Um, I do, I do that, think there should be occasional like junk boxes that you can drive through yeah, because then I, everyone I goes for them, right? Everyone will just go, oh fuck, or maybe like you know, up ahead, like there's everyone has like a ping, you can't see it yet because it's outside the eye, but in two hundred meters there's a there's a junk box and everyone gets the yeah. same thing. Like there might be like a few that spawn, but everyone gets the same pings, and you're like, "Well, oh, I'm going for this," and then you're like, yeah. "Well, he's going for that as well." So I'm just <laughs> you, gonna you, James, you could, we're gonna have to ram him or we'll go, we'll go for it. Uh, smaller bits as well, because if you're in this spinning tornado or something, you know, having bits of scrap flying in works conceptually and visually. So you could <laughs> just get just land like <laughs> catch it in the air. Or <laughs> Stuff yeah, that falls off the guy boat. at the back just. <laughs> Yeah, he's round and then hits the guy it. in the front. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, maybe that's it. It's like yeah, it's redistributed. <laughs> you're just, yeah. you're just it's driving like along and you see like one of your car doors just fly off, <laughs> like the <laughs> way oh, in front of you. Man. There needs the to be a cow as well. The car door falls off. The driver is now exposed, so now he can get shot yeah. and he'll yeah, have yeah, to yeah. He doesn't yeah. try to keep eyes on the road. Like, oh Jesus! It's very much raft but with wheels. I love the visual of seeing the way you see people being eliminated is by the the cars spinning around in the tornado that's going on around you. Oh, oh yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So that's you know, that's how you know that someone's gone out. That's fucking... But okay, so what? what is the benefit of... If it's an endless runner, effectively, and your your objective really is to just be the, the last one alive, right? And what, if, if you're trying to make sure everyone else is eliminated, but you... What is the advantage to being in front? Is it just that you, you're safer? Yeah, that's how I imagined it, at least. Like, you just have... Uh, yeah. Equally, is that trade-off, again, if you wanted to have, like, introduce natural disasters by their time distance to them, you also have a greater time distance to the threat at the back. Yeah. So, if you're in the middle, you are probably safest. Like, just... Uh, right. yeah, yeah. Also, but you're yeah, also most front, likely to be attacked. Yeah. Yeah, being yeah. at the front means that if your entire squad gets knocked out for five seconds, that's five seconds your car drifts back, but it's still kind of safe. Yeah. Um, so, I feel like that's the benefit of being... So also, at the very front yeah. edge of this thing. If that happens at the back, your car drifts into the eye and you're out. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Sorry, out of the eye and then you're out. So it, yeah. it pays to be forward, <laughs> but then if everyone's forward, no one's is. forward. Every, yeah, yeah. It's everyone's the incredible problem. It's the incredible. It's so yeah. That quote comes in handy. Um, 
Yeah. Like I, I feel like the mass of players fluctuates so much between there's someone at the front, so everyone races to the front to stop this guy. And then all of a sudden there's people yeah. drifting back because they're like, well, being behind everyone is way safer than being in front of everyone. So everyone yeah. then starts yeah, that's to drift it. Yeah, backwards. you're also going to get people at the back. Like yeah, so there's a it's, constant it's actually tide. being right at the back as beneficial as being right at the front. But, sometimes, but really risky. Like, it sometimes, depends. Yeah. You can still shoot backwards. There's, there's already a meta True. emerging in this. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But also, I like this idea that it's not just, like, if it's not like just a flat plane, you also have like, that's being broken down into like different paths through, like, if you imagine like a Mad Max kind of Utah esque landscape, mm. like weaving through parallel can <laughs> canyons. Yeah. Like, I don't, uh, yeah. I, I yeah, really like this idea. Bits, the more I do, the more we should talk be about bits it. that like, <laughs> You go into a can that brings everyone together. So everyone's now in like a short formation and now yeah. like yeah. everyone's like if I shoot this guy in front of me, he's gonna hit me. Right? Yeah. So I'm gonna have to yeah. just maybe this is the time where we all come together and repair our vehicles. Yeah, uh, and, and, you know, and it spreads out again. You're like, oh fuck! I love the idea that you last see a vehicle and then it goes off on a path for like 20 seconds and it comes back and it is just shot to shit. And you're like, what the, <laughs> what the fuck happened to you? Flapping <laughs> <laughs> bonnet with like bullet holes in it and all that. And there's a guy with like just a frame, like local just like voice speech. he's just looking you out. <laughs> like, and hey, like, this is right make for, one request: uh, skins. Mm. What, yeah, one request? Talking go. about skin. Actually, that uh, mm. skins it's wise, this fucker. One one of these vehicles <laughs> has to have a fridge door as the main passenger yes. door. Like oh, we need, yeah. you need oh, to have such yeah. customization where stuff is just could even be random. That that bits James, of scraps have been collected from all over the world. That's put together. five thousand storm coins. <laughs> yeah, shop, right. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. Uh, the customization is you. You have a certain budget on your vehicle. Like if you've picked a truck, you've got a five thousand point budget, and you're yeah. like, oh, a fridge door costs two hundred. Yeah, that exactly. Here. Uh, but but it also has a weight cost. But it has yeah. good armor because it can yeah. survive. It's a. It's one of the <laughs> fridges from Indiana Jones, right? So it can survive a <laughs> nuclear blast. Yeah. Exactly. And well, you get, you or you get like, I like, love the idea that you could pay coins as well to put somebody on the bonnet of your car to blow stuff into your engine. Like that's like an upgrade that you can have. But it's I, not that's replaceable. Not, that, that's like, not where I thought you were going. I thought you were like, I'm going to strap like a skeleton to the front bonnet to like to scare my uh, competitors. A warrior. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To be do clear, do I think we're going to go Reaver style. I don't think we should have coins to pay for upgrades. In no, no, purely yeah. 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 Okay. Budget, we, yeah, we've method. settled into this trap. This is the new celebrity endorsement. Yeah, <laughs> putting gems hey, and coins sell, together. Selling, yeah, my exhaust is green. I paid ten pounds for that. Like that's yeah. the kind of shit so, we want. Okay, like, customization. We, we, yeah. we, I mean, you could do the Rocket We're League system, now. actually, I suppose. You could have, like, you, you collect blueprints, but then you have to, like, pay for a pass yeah. to, to unlock them or something. Sorry, There's you no visible What's upgrade. It's just, a, it's just what it looks like. <laughs> Would you say at this point uh, we're not we're not at the end yet, but we're kind of we're kind of you know we've we've discussed it a decent amount now. What at this point could you give a recap of what you think the game is, or anyone who feels comfortable to what what is this game currently? Okay, so we, what we have is an endless runner type game in a Mad mm -hmm. Max style setting where it is vehicle and vehicle combat. The vehicles are variable sized. So you get some small vehicles like bikes, some large vehicles like trucks. Um, at the start of the race, you have a certain points budget that you can put into speed, armor, weight, all that kind of thing. Um, and you get to choose the weaponry that you have. And um, over the course of the race, you uh, have to stay out of the, the blue zone at the back of this sort of uh, hurricane type, dust storm type thing. But equally, yeah. you don't want to go too far forwards because if you do, you don't see what's coming and the natural disasters that are appearing on the map. Um, but you want to be the last person standing, which you can accomplish by staying in the right place or by taking out your opponents. Yes, that's yeah. it. It's awesome as well, by the way. <laughs> Chris, your hand shot up with a, with a huge I had on your face. I a, a great <laughs> idea. It doesn't change the concept. It takes a concept that we already had and I think it proves it. Mm -hmm. So, do you know, I was talking about okay. the bikes earlier. So, everyone gets a truck no matter what, right? Everyone's in trucks. Okay. What, are, are they? They should be. This is my... This oh. is my Hey, no, this, this this does change the idea. Well, no, no, but like, everyone can still customise everything. <laughs> Forget bikes for the time being as, as, a, as, a, as a vehicle no. type, right? Okay, let's entertain, uh, let's entertain you. Well, no, you, you, <laughs> so the way it would work is in my thing is you, you everyone everyone's always in four, so you're always on a team of four. What? The bikes, mm -hmm. the bikes are the scrappers. <laughs> so they're the, they're the guys that collect the scrap. No. So they have to pick the scrap up and bring it back, <laughs> and then like, because then you have to too. send, you have to send your little bike out, <laughs> look, to collect scrap. I, know, I feel like I know the very the rule size is like I, that to me is like a crucial part of it. I think. 
But, but how yeah, do you... I, I think... Uh, yeah. I, but the, the whole... I do like that idea. Repair... But I think Simon's got a point. But, it, yeah, like, you can't... That doesn't work in a game like Guns of Icarus. The, the game is based around teamwork and fixing things. You don't mm. have... Uh, like, if you're, if you're driving, you can't repair something. If you're on a bike... You're dead. Well, okay. Let's let's imagine this through then. So, if you if you were to jump into, if you were to play uh, Eye of the Storm, you jump in. You're like, <laughs> okay, I'm uh, my friends are out at the moment. I'm going to play on my own. I'm going to jump in solo. You jump into a race. You're a little bike. Everyone else is is trios and quads or whatever. There's some other How solos. Does in this there? play out? Yeah, yeah. Maybe a couple of solos. I mean, yeah. That's the thing. The bike, How is this going to play out? The bike is probably weaker. Uh, right. Probably what doesn't have as good guns. Shot? Apes you together just strong. Back. You fall back, but you're super quick. You are way well, quicker you than all the others. You could have like just front mounted Easy. guns, like uh, like mm. space it's marine normal bikes. Yeah, the kind of thing. Like like the fucking like the bikers in Mad Max. They can jump super far and they've got grenades. Yeah, you could also have throwable items. Actually, yeah, but, if you're but on they're a, they're yeah. they're on a bike driven by someone else. No, that's no, true. If you're, a, if you're if <laughs> you, uh, okay, yeah, but then they they jump off their bike and their bike gets destroyed. No, this is like a the, the bike. <laughs> the benefit of the bike is it's way quicker. It's got you, yeah. Got okay, yeah, I understand right, that that, and, but mechanically no, it doesn't work with the rest of the game. It does. It totally does. Yeah, it doesn't. Of all the disasters that come up, you're able to navigate them much quicker. You're able to whip no, through. No, 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 the no, 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 not that. Again, no, navigation. Fine. I understand how bikes work. But I'm also, talking in terms of repair, <laughs> armor. You can't. You, you can't send people to different bar. components. You right. take one hand off a handlebar and you just. Drill it back in, and that's the end of it. Maybe you've got okay, like James, an R two D two kind of janky <laughs> kind of like robot that's out the back fixing it. But that's kind of not in keeping with the style. But like the whole point is that <laughs> maybe because not. you're on your own and weaker, right? <laughs> maybe you can't ever repair. Maybe that's just part of it. But or you just have one um, like hit. Uh, hit, hit points st- scale and you just like can dedicate yourself to keep going in the direction you're going and just like lean around and smack your bike with a spanner and that's how you repair yourself because then you yeah, have to take your eye like off the road just hitting the bike with a hammer whilst trying to dodge but you would then people you would lose you. you would lose the ability to steer and be fast well yeah but that's the trade off you'd have to have a penalty down a bit. Yeah. yeah maybe yeah. you're super quick yeah. at being able to repair but it is okay like a, so what does a two player one look like that's a that's a car. Is that like a Robin <laughs> Reliant? And then, <laughs> or, or you yeah. have like a, a normal like sedan style car with like a pin, like a pencil mounted weapon on the back, like a pickup truck. It's a Volvo actually. with a yeah. like fifty mm. cow coming out the that's roof. That's brilliant. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Can you tell I play Warhammer? This is. But, like, but then, but then the problem again. The problem with that is that that becomes kind of boring for the other player. Like the the what? four player experience, you have room to run around like you would in. Um, Guns of Icarus, Guns of Icarus. right? It's, mm. it's the going down into other levels. That's why I'm talking like big rigs, like big trucks, where you have room to rigs. run slightly. Even if it's a short distance, you have to. It's that manic running to where you need to be that makes Guns of Icarus and a game like Sea of Thieves more enjoyable than just shoot, shoot, shoot. I need to get yeah. off this gun, run over there, do that thing for five, <laughs> five seconds, but, run back okay. to the gun. And start doing it again. Is there a way that we can? Because this is something that I've been wanting to bring up. Um, that it, talking about the players specifically, it, something that we haven't talked about yet is because it, the, another one of the frustrations that I have in Sea of Thieves. Um, I'm not sure if this is the same in Guns of Icarus. I haven't played it, but there are no there are no classes. Everyone is the same, and that becomes again quite frustrating, quite boring, very quickly because i feel like there's no variation like did, how, how did you imagine this originally simon would you imagine people having like is it like yeah you know, squ- uh, isn't it like team fortress or like because you know people have different abilities because in guns of icarus you have pilot engineer gunner so and and the, they're all the same but they have different uh, equipment slots so the gunner will, can take okay. different kinds of ammunition um whereas the pilot can take multiple uh piloting aids uh type thing so perhaps you could have that similar division of driver gunner engineer and maybe you do need different tools i hadn't i had imagined that there would be different classes but i hadn't really fleshed out how that would work i have to admit i think if you uh assign people to roles and you're playing on a three-person team for example and you're playing with yeah. someone who two people want to be the driver it's kind of i feel like everyone should be able to do anything um because they can in guns of icarus right though but it's just slower yeah. for them to do that they thing, can or they yeah. have a but but they also have to specialize in the thing they don't really want to specialize in i've, I've played guns of icarus where i'm like i don't want to be the engineer and um <laughs> i had to be because everyone else you know was gunner or pilot or whatever and i just 
I mean, I could have enjoyed the game a lot more if I was playing the class I want to be. I think everyone should be able to do everything. If the driver yeah. is knocked out, someone else can jump in and take mm. over the driver's seat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I do like the idea that they could be ragdoll effects on these on these characters as well. Like the driver gets knocked out, flies to the back of the truck, and you're like, okay, you've got to run up to the front. Someone else Wait, has got to run. You're not back here. Or they just slump in the their car? seat. Yeah, or, exactly. Or, and and it's and just you going, <laughs> or, or yeah, they slump in their seat, and then when you go up to replace them, you have to like kick them out of the door. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. you have to see their, bo- their limp body. If you, you know, <laughs> fly out. <laughs> <laughs> fly back. Fuck. Um, in terms of... So, my idea for classes wasn't to do with people yeah. having individual skills. It was kind of like in COD, where you have loadouts, but the loadouts is for your vehicles. So when I was mentioning like Bodicea spikes earlier, that's mm. a, a loadout you choose at the start. So you can have an aggressive truck loadout or a defensive truck loadout or like a more, you know, balanced truck loadout. You have a different back. So maybe you've got like an open truck bed at the back. So your guys are more open, but it also gives them greater room to shoot. If you've got a really defensive one, it's enclosed. They can't. They've got small slots to shoot out of, but it means you can take more hits before you know a thing starts to. That but also slower. It wasn't to do with the the people can do whatever they want. Yeah, it's still about communication and rotation of like roles. But the the, yeah. the this is why everyone I was saying everyone should have the same sort of truck, and it's what you how you build it is different. Mm. Uh, everything and you can choose to say oh that that last round we played a heavy loadout and we weren't that very like good at it so let's try for a more scout quick loadout it's the it's the it's the trial and error and coming up with a good composition that makes uh it sort of better but if you're playing solo i would say you queue if you're playing a solo player you and you you end up with either like a, a people you queue as a uh no you know like a driver as in you queue with your truck and then you have people who just want to join a game they don't care they, they don't want to use their truck so they just jump into yours if that mm, makes sense. you queue differently yeah i think you can queue based on the vehicle james i was just yeah. thinking uh about the needing to swap players around so you, uh, if someone wants to be the driver but someone else doesn't get a chance i wonder if there's a way that we can force that to happen so maybe the the bigger heavier trucks you've got a fatigue meter or something so driving actually takes oh energy mm. from you. a meter in you love oh, yeah. a meter so you know you can drive well and then you start slowing down as your meter decreases so it's like all right i need someone else to take over i got everything it. else is fine but what if like you just have a, a it's kind of like a fatigue meter but it was basically just to do with the fact that as as you're driving you're, you're exposed to something as in like it could be like a radiation from the oh yeah i like that thing so you have to then get off Go back and like wait <laughs> for your yeah. cool down to, and then someone else <laughs> yeah, rotates you're forced in. Forced to maybe rotate. The, the driver's seat is constantly the one that's main, the, like at the very highest point of the truck, so everyone can just shoot at that. So if you're in the driver's seat, you're more likely to die. Right. Yeah. Uh, or, or if you get your window window shot out, maybe your maybe it doesn't just come in straight away. Slowly vignettes in until like you just can't see what's going on because you're just yeah. being inundated by like solar radiation because well, maybe that's yeah. the atmosphere. sandstorm isn't it maybe the sandstorm is the only thing it, but then how would, you, how would you implement that for single player people if you're on a bike then that's why they weren't got my idea doesn't have bikes that's why <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, and also <laughs> that's why they only go out to collect scrap and they come back and then you can send someone else out because again going outside of this thing creates actually yeah but but if you yeah. if you just give people on, on exposed bikes helmets then i suppose that just makes sense like maybe there's only <laughs> yeah. there's one per vehicle and that's it i think that's the one thing where like it is it i feel like if you're in a truck then the need in with more people the need to swap is more important or, yeah. or a lot quicker for you guys the people on the bike they obviously can't swap so they never need to swap um mm. but i think once once you give everyone the same vehicle uh and the same loadout options you're very quickly going to get to a point where everybody has the same loadout because, oh, someone's found yeah. out the Bodicea spikes, they're really powerful. If you yeah, give them a right? Meta, right? Cod does that. Yeah. Like, if you Cod, give them a crate of grenades, everyone the ground. picks that. Like, everyone's that's going, what, yeah. oh, the MP7 on the ground. So you, you make, you, you patch something that can counter that or you, that's going to happen in any game. It happens in every game. I guess it's a constant they go, oh, this is the process, perfect, isn't it? Yeah. This is like the perfect Dota, loadout. 
But if you have yeah, multiple there might be kinds a thing of vehicles, where everyone chooses bikes, because but if you, but like, if oh, you have multiple kinds of vehicles, then mm. I feel like that. It, it, yes, it will happen, but it's just it's like an extra dimension to you know. So yeah. it's, it's going to happen. It's going to converge to a particular solution much much slower than it yeah, would I'm not if everyone had the that same. Multiple types of vehicles is a bad idea, but I'm saying the multiple types of vehicles, depending on what those vehicles are, change the gameplay too much away from that Guns of Icarus style. Everyone needs to do their job and rotate stuff out. Oh, that's on fire. Go do that. You can't do that in a car. Like you can't do that in a like s- sedan because the, s- the seat switching is just all right. Yeah, like you can't run somewhere in a <laughs> yeah. sedan. But that's the point. Is <laughs> no, the, 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 the initial pitch was Guns of Icarus style. Well, that's, that's inspired. Bikes, that's just that's just like the uh, the the, the team based combat aspect of it. Like I, 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 I Fifty I minutes say, ago, I Chris. always imagined <laughs> the switching to be a bit like double dash. Like I yeah, didn't necessarily small, think it would take a long time. I think if you're on a small was, vehicle, yeah, but I think if you're on like a big rig, then I do quite like the idea that you actually have to. There is like a around, travel yeah. time. Cli- climb to, over the top of it and get into the yeah yeah, like the yeah. Booth and stuff that could. Oh, okay, uh, I I think we're at a point now. Like, uh, it almost feels like we're talking to the game about a game that already exists because it feels so like so great to be honest. <laughs> but it, it's we're, really we're not, really cool. <laughs> That sounded insincere, but like, but genuinely, I'm. Like, um, I, I don't think we're going to solve the problem of should there be bikes or not. So I think this is probably a good point. <laughs> we just got the bike to, purist, Chris, over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Against, schism not against, already happened. I was never, I was never against bikes. I was against their initial implementation. Uh, I, I agree yeah, with yeah. bikes as like a scout unit. <laughs> All right, Martin Luther. Like it's that fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, okay, uh, now's probably a good time to uh, to go around and see how everyone's feeling. Tom, what do you reckon? I think this game is incredible. I genuinely <laughs> think that the eye of the storm visual, just oh my god, just the intense nature from very start of the race to the end of the race, yeah. where the eye of the storm is going, it's lightning. There's kick-ass music Never going on up. and it accumulates more and more exploding. parts as well like yeah, the destroyed like vehicles the storm gets thicker and thicker as time goes on with just scrap and other vehicles and also going directly against what stupid chris said <laughs> <laughs> the ability to play the game live it i'm living <laughs> the ability to play the game at any point with any team size and it determines what vehicle you get is so important for a battle royale game because there's so many times where i'm like Oh, should we play Warzone? Can't. There's only two of us. I mean, I know they've got duos now and whatever, but at the time when it first came out, you couldn't. Yeah. And that was mm. just like, well, I guess we're not playing this game then, because we, unless we want to join with some randomer who's going to get really racist and quit. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think visually it's awesome. I think the, the, there is a certain balance between being in first place, you drop a load of scrap, people behind can pick up more scrap so they can catch up. It just sounds... So cool. I, I want it. I need it. <laughs> the, the first, like, when I saw um, Mad Max in the cinema, the, the first, like, 20 minutes of that, which is basically just an action sequence, maybe even 30 minutes. I think it's the whole bit, film. I remember watching, that's, that's a funny yeah. way of saying it, the yeah, entire yeah. film. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a, there's a moment where, like, um, the, you know, they go through the big dust storm sequence and then it cuts to, it cuts to black or it fades to black on a little mm. flare. Yeah. And then... That was, I felt like that was the first time. So there was someone sitting in front of me. The entire audience was silent, but there was one guy in front of me and he just went, <sighs> as if like he had just breathed. Yeah. He, he, yeah, yeah. he had and just finished. Well. And like the, the, the idea of a game that makes you feel like that hmm. is just it's so exciting. Um, it's just constant action. James. I mean, yeah, I, I, I want it. I need it. I want to make it. Um, <laughs> I want to play it. I, I love the the thought that okay so you might have these big trucks and okay if i, I want bikes as well because i feel like you might actually end up with some sort of strange <laughs> i still want bikes social <laughs> dynamics where all the all the single players who don't know each other sort of might help you're, each other like initially yeah to, to yeah, take down yeah, yeah. A, a big truck and then they'll yeah, exactly. disperse that's like, a great yeah, point fuck you, fuck you. Yeah. So like yeah. yeah i i want it need it love it holy shit chris Okay, again, <laughs> just say bikes. no, Chris. Just not. No, I, I, I really enjoyed the just game. Tell us what you think. I really enjoyed the game. Sorry, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, I really enjoyed it. Hence, why I was throwing so many ideas. At. I really did enjoy the concept, and I just think that I'm all for different different vehicles. But I think you need to nail down how the gameplay mechanics will change based on size of the vehicles. Not 100% necessarily. Agree. 
Not necessarily just... Yes. If you're running around on one truck, no one's going to pick that because it takes longer to do stuff. You need to balance vehicles and you need to figure out how they could be huge vehicles and then trucks maybe the smallest vehicle like you could do big big like behemoth vehicles of like sand crawlers like, thing, yeah, style. like yeah. <laughs> things um, that are just <laughs> mashed together the like monster trucks into this massive thing okay but well, as, it, as, it, as a counterpoint in terms of as a, as a yeah, counterpoint sorry, chris um shut up i hate you <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, but distilling, <laughs> distilling it down, Chris. To t- would make, would play? Oh. Question mark. Would make if we made those changes? Would play if we made those changes? <laughs> I wouldn't I play. Love, I love that this is the first time in ages. <laughs> hey, this, we've is, had a you know, this is a hill I'm going like, to die Chris on. Has brought right? in this a is a legitimate like discussion about game development, and we've just. I try my best. <laughs> I try my best to do this every time. Uh, I appreciate no, that's I, why you're here. Chris. I completely agree, Chris, with what you're saying about having to balance the different vehicle types. And we I can think- end it there. That is just that is the most <laughs> fundamental thing. But, uh, hey, sorry, I'm going to shut up. I'm just going to I'm going to Google how to learn Unity. Hang on. Um, I, I think. Oh my god. This is by far like the the most passionate discussion I think we've had like about a game. So we've all cool. got excited about. Um, so holy shit, Simon! Thank you very much for that. That was a wonderful idea that has generated a lot of excitement. That we all now want to go and make it. I want. Yeah, I want ten percent. Otherwise, go nuts. Uh, so thank you oh, very sure. much for having me. This sure. was, I never get to talk to people about games because normally I'm just sat on my own editing or like doing my live stream. So to actually get to have a conversation about this stuff <laughs> oh, is man. really really fun. It's been so much fun. Well, if you have any, any other ideas that are on par with yeah, this one, please. then you are always <laughs> oh welcome to come back because. That was so good. <laughs> I've been trying to think of a pun for the last like forty minutes because I, mean, I normally oh end up God. trying well, to no, think of a storm, pun. Right? You, I had the storm was a good a, name. It's not a pun though. I was sitting there. I've been, up with the I've been pun sitting in there just the, rattling the off the car name. names trying to. Look. You've got so like carnage, Mercedes, hmm. carnage, carnage yeah, pun, work. right? I had the storm. You need to think about this as a podcast name, right? If someone sees. Uh, pitch please with Dr. Simon Clark, Eye of the Storm. They're going to think, storm. like, oh, it's a nerd game. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> here comes, here comes, here comes <laughs> Climate Boy. Uh, Captain it's Meteorology. It's something, it's Warhammer. Uh, yeah. Carmageddon's got a, a certain, je ne sais quoi to it. Like, I like that. That already Fine. exists. Like. Sure. It already exists. <laughs> Doesn't it? Already right. exists. Yeah. Freaking, yeah, it's Damn it. All right. It's gonna, this is, this is going to be called Carnage unless after I. No, Eye of the Storm was We stop recording. Okay. Okay. Carnage, Eye of the Storm. Fuck it, Carnage. Car- yes. What about Fuck it. Ca- Carmulo Nimbus? Uh, <laughs> Car- Carmulo Nimbus. All right, sure. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for listening. Simon, thank you so much for joining us. Me, Tom, James, and Chris will join you again next week. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Yeah, fuck you, Chris. Oh, Chris. Fuck you, Chris. I was never against bikes. <laughs>